Suppose you've got a table of names and sales for a six month period. And what you need to do is to create a list of those names with those sales aggregated, say with a sum or an average. And we'd like to place that result right here. If we were to use Power Query to solve this problem, let's click in the data, go up to data from table range. And now once in Power Query, this is very easy to do. We'll click on January, scroll over, shift click on June. And then we'll do something like add column, statistics, average. And here we have the average of those six months. Now before we see the problem with doing it this way, let's do a little cleanup on this data. We'll first take the first column, salesperson, scroll over, select the average column, and we'll remove all the other columns. With what's left over, we'll refine the data types, we'll set the first column to text, and we'll set the average to a currency. And just to make sure we don't get anything beyond the hundreds place precision in the fraction, we'll do a little right click, transform, round, and we'll round this to two decimal places. Let's go up to home, do a close and load, and we'll place the results right here. Now here's the problem with the technique we used. If we go to this table and we add a new month like July, and now let's put in some new information, say 10,000. If we were to go back to the output and right click refresh, notice the values did not change. If we change these to a dollar and go back to the table, right click refresh, nothing's changing. So why aren't the July numbers being incorporated into the new output? We need to go back up to data, get back into our query, right click edit, and go back to the step where we inserted the average. Now if you look at the M code, we're using a list.average function, but it's hard coding the months January through June. So any new months that are added to the data will not be seen by the query. We need to be able to dynamically discover the number of months in the table, so that each time when a new month is added, the query refreshes properly. To do this will require creating a custom function. This custom function will have three main parts. The first part will be to reduce each row into a record item. This way we can isolate the months and effectively ignore the salesperson column. Second will be to turn each of those records into a list. And finally third, we'll execute our aggregation function like average on that list. Make sure you download this file from the link in the video description, that way you can follow along as I do this, plus be able to refer back to it later for all the documentation of the formula. We'll begin by clicking in the data, We'll go up to Data, From Table Range, and we'll begin by going up to Add Column, Custom Column. So the first thing we have to do is to take each of these rows and compress them down into record objects. Now I'll start by creating a new custom column called Record Test. And just to see how this record creation is performed, the only thing we have to type into this formula is an underscore, because the underscore character represents a row. When we hit OK, we now have a column of record objects. And if we click next to the word record on one of these, we see the salesperson's name and their six sales. And we can go record by record looking at this information. Now in all actuality, we don't want the entire record. We only want the monthly entry. So we need to kick out the salesperson column from this record. So let's go back to the gear and we'll wrap this underscore character inside of a record remove fields function. So open parentheses. The first argument is the record and that's what the underscore is going to generate. The second argument is which field do we wish to remove? And that's going to be the salesperson field. So in double quotes, we'll write salesperson. Hit OK. Now we still have the same records, but notice now when we click next to them, the salesperson field has been removed. So we converted this to a record and then used record remove fields to take out the salesperson column. The next thing we have to do is convert these records into lists. Because we can't average the items in a record, but we can average the items in a list. So let's go back to the gear. Let's take the record.remove fields function and wrap it inside of a record to list function. So what this will do is to turn that record of fields with numbers into a list of numbers. We'll hit OK. And now all of our records have been turned into lists. If we click next to the word list, it's just the list of values. This is what we can then average, sum, and perform any other aggregation we wish. So if we want to perform an average, let's go back to the gear and we'll take this record to list function and wrap it inside of a list average function. So we're taking the average of a list that is comprised of numbers from a record. Hit OK. And here are the average for those monthly sales. Anything after this is just based on what you want to do with the data. And so we could do something like select salesperson, scroll over, select record test, right click, remove the other columns. I'm going to rename this to average sales and we'll do some data typing. Set this to text, set this to currency, and to make sure we don't get anything beyond the hundreds place precision in the fraction, we'll go up to transform, rounding, round, and we'll set that to two decimal places. I'll rename the query, 
to aggregated report, and we'll go to home and close and load this out. And I'm going to go ahead and place the finished product on an existing worksheet, and that location is right here. Hit OK, and here we have our output. Now to test if this is going to include newly added months, let's go up and create a July entry, and we'll put a really big number in here, like 100,000. If we go back to the Power Query output, right-click Refresh, we've got all new averages. So as we add new months, that data will be incorporated into the output. If you open up the solution file and go into Power Query, if you examine this step by step, you can see what each modification and each new function brings to the final result. So the first step in the query is just to bring in the data. So here we have the salesperson names and the first six months of sales. Second, we use the underscore character to capture each row into an actual record object. And when we click next to one of the records, we can see the underlying record information. Third, we use the record.remove fields function to remove the salesperson field from each of those records. Fourth, we use the record.toList function to convert each of those records to a list. And then finally, fifth, we use a list.average function to take the numbers in each list and calculate their averages. Our final step was just to put polish on all this information, like remove the monthly data, set the data types, and perform the rounding. Here we see the output of the query and the custom function that was used to create it. But what if you want to perform multiple aggregations, like sums, averages, max, mins, counts, those sorts of things? So let's now see how we can take our six months worth of sales, turn that into a multi-aggregation report, and do it in a way that it includes new months as they're added to the data. So I've brought the data into Power Query. This is going to be very similar to what we did, but there will be a twist. Let's begin by taking each one of these rows, converting them into a record object, and then removing the salesperson field. So we'll go to Add Column, Custom Column, and we'll call this new column Sales Data. Remember, we start by isolating each row into a record using the underscore character, but then we'll take each record and encapsulate it in a record.removeFields function. So the first argument is the record, that's the underscore. The second argument will be to remove the salesperson column. And then finally, we want to take that reduced version of the record and turn it into a list. So we'll use the record to list function. Now this is exactly what we did before, but here's where we're going to stop. We're not going to take the result of that list and turn it into an average. We're just going to store the results into a new field. So we'll hit OK. So if we look at one of these lists, it's just lists of numbers. Now at this point, we don't need the monthly data any longer. So we'll take salesperson and select sales data and remove the other columns. So it is from these lists that we wish to generate sums, averages, max, mins, and counts. So we'll go up to add column, custom column. We'll call this new column total sales. And the function we'll use is a list.sum function. Open parentheses, and all we have to do is point to the sales data field. Close parentheses, hit OK, and here we have our total sales. We'll add another custom column. We'll call this one average sales, and this will use a list.average function. We'll point to sales data, close parentheses, hit enter, and now we have our averages. Let's find our best sale, custom column. We'll call this best sale, and this will use a list.max function. Point to sales data, close parentheses, hit OK. There's our best sale, custom column. We now want to discover our worst sale, so this will be a list.min function. Point to the sales data, close parentheses, hit OK. And finally, we'd like to know the number of sales, and this will be a list.count function. Open parentheses, point to the sales data, close parentheses, hit OK, and we can see each one of these rows has six transactions. Going back to the beginning of the table, we no longer need the sales data, we can delete that and everything else is just gilding the lily at this point. We can set data types, and then I'll take all of the monetary calculations and we'll round them to two decimal places. We'll go up to home and close and load this data out. And so now as a test, if we go back to the original sales data and we were to add six more months worth of data, we'll go back to the aggregated report. Here are the values, which we're not going to memorize, but we can see we have six entries per row. If we right click on the output, Go to refresh, all the values have changed, and we can see we had 12 sales per person. Be sure to download the solution files from the link in the video description so you can go back and check the custom functions that we wrote. See how we could create a single aggregation, but also the code for creating multiple aggregations. Let me know what you think about this in the comments. Does it help to understand the use of the underscore character now, and possibly some other functions you never used before? It's time to start going beyond what's just available in the ribbon.
Thank you so much for taking the time to watch. And remember, at BCTI, the learning never stops.